me on. She, she saw me on Ricky Lee. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's a little bit of success. Yeah. So you never got because it was about early 2000s that everything sort of. Yeah. He, my dad died in the 90s. He saw me on a couple of shows when I was performing in uh, the Madison Square Garden and in the show that they had there, a Halloween show. Um, but but really outside of outside of that, he didn't really. Uh, get to see my success or really be able to enjoy my success. And it's really, you know, I give everything back uh, just that a moment. My dad was really my biggest inspiration. I mean, my dad really showed me the power of the mind and some of these crazy things that I don't have mind for, you know, whether it's hanging by the fish hooks, which wasn't a trick. I hung by four fish hooks from my flesh from a helicopter. I broke the record in six hours hanging by fish hooks. And I used to pass out from needles when I used to go to doctor. I could not, uh, you know, have any... Uh, discipline when it came to pain, and then I, and then my dad, you know, I saw my dad go through cancer, you know, life in that situation was given a death sentence of three weeks to live in the boat, three years, to the astonishment of the doctors, and my dad just showed me that, you know, the power of the mind is incredible, your body's a slave to it, and I really just started applying that to all of my fears and overcoming them with my demonstrations, and, uh, and so my dad was really, uh, he inspired me way beyond his years on this earth, and he continues to do that. He, I uh, read that he passed away in your arms. Yes, I, in my hands, literally in my hands, and I wouldn't let the coronary put him in the bag. I put him in the bag. I carried off my brothers, and uh, yeah, I was. Uh, I had a very close relationship with him. That was one of the most difficult times of my of my life, you know. And uh, it was it was really rough, you know, losing uh, losing. Uh, a loved one is not an easy thing, especially when you're really close and, you know, they, they believe in you and they feel the way for you. Do you think know, that in a way that, that uh, your father dying in your arms, does that inspire you or motivate you to, to, to say, look, uh, you know, it's probably everyone knows we're all going to die. Sure, again, sure. But when your own father dies yeah. in your arms, you go, this is this is something that's actually real. If we have pretty much one life to live, I better make the most of it. Well, yeah, I, I was uh, also a wall, man. I was, I was so, I was like, anything got my way, I was going to rip it out of my way. I, I just, and I still possess that I a very competitive spirit, you know, and the journey is much easier than a destination. You know, becoming the number one guy out there in the world is one thing, but to remain there, it takes even more work, and literally I'm working seven days a week, I work on average 15 hours a day, because I'm not going to be number two until I say, you know what, I've done this, I'm done, I'm going to retire, but that's, that, that hasn't come yet, so my dad, his work ethic, and his um, perseverance, and his, um, his fiber of, 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 his, of, of his being really lives to me, and, and I know that's something that will live on me, and and hopefully down the road to, uh, to my kids, you know, uh, eventually. My kids. You don't have any kids now? Uh, yeah, no. No, no. Not, not that you know of. Not that I'm a very family-oriented person. I have kids all over. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know you, you were married for a while, for I think four years. Yeah. And, uh, divorced. Are you you're remarried now? Are you a girlfriend? Or what's the story now? Um, <laughs> it's like, put it this way. My professional life, I can manage brilliantly. My personal life is a freaking disaster. Why do you think that is? Because I only work and I don't I don't spend time. I'm just I just uh, I'm just obsessed with working and I'm married to my craft and it's uh, I it's don't sickness. understand that. It's it's I'll, I'll give you some, I'll give you uh, the story. My uh, my I've been dating a girl for over two years now, and she's the first girl that I've dated that really understands it doesn't have a problem with me working because you know people think I come in here uh, talk before and after yeah, right, and that's prep, it. Yeah. you have to set up right. a show um, and, and a lot of work goes into it a lot of the business stuff that we do also it's right. a lot of work uh, and she's never complained doesn't have a problem every other girl that I've dated in the past oh you know oh, you, you know you do this too much you spend too much time why can't we do this why can't we do that and it's always bitching and moaning you're not with them. That's right. That's exactly. So it is, it is the same thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a little metaphor for you. Can you teach me some future? <laughs> uh, it makes people disappear. Um, 
so so you have the same thing so women it's tough for them i mean they all want to date chris angel because you're a celebrity you have uh, a great celebrity net worth 50 million dollars is what it says Dieter. um they so the idea of dating you is appealing but the actual dating chris angel may not be as fun as they think it might be no i'm a very different person than you know uh uh, when I'm working, I'm on stage, it's one thing, but uh, I'm, uh, I'm somebody very focused. I'm somebody that has many different distances. Um, I just saw yesterday in Walgreens, my new deck of cards is out. I have products out there. I have products in 15,000 stores, you know. Um, and, and so, yeah, I have a, a very much of a business in the feet of mine, and so that consumes me. And, and yeah, it's not very fun. I was out there, I had no management, nothing. I was doing everything myself. 
and uh, I went out there and I, I sold uh, uh, the ABC family at the time, uh, the TV style, so uh, it was called Mind Free, and that did very well. It was 13, I saw how I'm in one week, so for that 13 nights, and then I sold another show the following year, so I applied for Supernatural, and, uh, and, and basically that was successful, and then I and people would come to see me, and I was in this tiny little room with like some of these basement, and I realized, you know what, I have to move on, so I essentially closed the show. I didn't know what I was going to do, I knew what I was going to do, and then I was just managing to be around to be a friend of mine, 